Welcome back to yet another video featuring uh, Prusa Slicer. So leaving off from our last video where we were talking about uh, just a general putting a model into Prusa Slicer, putting on some supports and adding some custom supports, removing supports that we found unnecessary. Uh, I want to talk about probably the best feature in Prusa Slicer. And I've talked about this for uh, normal FDM printing, but now this is strictly focused for us that have an SL1 or that have a uh, resin printer and it's called project files. So Prusa does a really good job of making sure that we have project files. So when we do edits and custom things, um, they are taken care of and we can go back and we can edit them again. So we're not um, constantly re-slicing the same thing over and over again and trying to remember the settings that we used and what settings we didn't use and what we changed. So this model here by Trahan, uh, who I have dubbed the uh, HR Geiger of the uh, Egyptian dynasty, because he's really good at this. I mean, this is just an amazing model. I mean, look at the detail. I've printed one of these before. It's super awesome. Uh, I've posted it on the uh, Twitterverse. I don't think I've shared it anywhere else, unfortunately. Maybe I should make a gallery. I don't know. So let's go ahead and edit this up like I would. And I'll walk you through that real quick. Uh, just a quick edit. And then we'll save it as a project and show you why it's awesome. So uh, first things first, let's go ahead and just kind of look at it and figure out how the best way to orient this is. Um, and I believe, believe there is an auto orient feature, which if I right click, I can hit optimize orientation. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's play with the optimize orientation. And this will take a second because again, it takes math and science. I am on my faster computer, but uh, all of these slicers um, take a little bit of gas. And this is this is taking a while. Let's go ahead and cancel that. We aren't going to do that. We're going to do it my way. So let's go ahead and take a look at this model. Um, let's see, right there. Button number five gives me that side view that I, I like to look at. So again, I like to print things at about a 45 degree angle. Uh, if I print it in this direction, all the layers would be sliced uh, directly top and bottom through the print. And I find that to be unflattering, especially since the layers are going to be at 0 0.05. I know that's a small layer, but uh, it's not in the, uh, you know, resin printing world. So we're going to go ahead and slice this thing at a slight angle so that we don't have these, you know, layer lines. And again, the, the SL1 does have um, anti-aliasing, which helps a lot, but it doesn't make it go completely away. So let's go ahead and do a quick edit here. So let's go ahead and use the rotate tool. We will transform this and we need to get away. So we only need to put a support here and there. And it looks like, looks like that angle would be just about great. So let's go and do that. Let's go ahead and add custom supports by clicking the custom supports button. I apologize for how long that takes, but so auto generate points. And it is loading down here and it will take a second. This is a highly detailed model. So, um, it, it you know welcome welcome to printing in the s in the uh, resin world everything is highly detailed so it takes more math and science for it to render so there we go it actually did a pretty good job I would say those supports will work it, it got the snake up here the back end might use a support I think I'll put one there just for safety reasons and I'll add some supports here so let's go to manual editing. And we'll add a support here and here, maybe a couple up here just to make, because again, I have a rule and that rule is the best one to live by when it comes to these things. A print that sticks to the plate and doesn't pop off is the best kind of print. And that's usually you have to worry about because those peel forces on these printers it can get intense. So I'll put one support back here. And we're basically looking for thin area. So if I go back to five, again, we're just printing like this. So as the layers get wider, and has more of an overhang, just like we would in FDM, we want to make sure it's supported. So this isn't bad, this isn't bad, the nose is great, this is great. This is getting really thin. And when it gets thin, that means the peel could cause it to warp and you might get a, a disconnect, it might fall off. You don't want it too thin. Uh, and the supports are what help. So we're done, apply changes. And we'll let that render through here real quick. Haha, <laughs> I said real quick. <laughs> So yeah, that looks great. That's going to support exactly where it needs to support. That shouldn't pop off the build plate. The pad will help that. 
And let's go ahead and uh, what you normally do is hit slice now export. But what we're going to do is let's say we did that. And then we find out, you know what, I really want to print more of these, but I want to print them one at a time. Well, you'd have to go back in, re-slice this, redo all this, waste a lot of time, blah, blah, blah. Well, check it out. We can go to File, we go to Save Project, and fair. And we'll slide that over here. Let's do a top down. So that's a one. I know I'm being particular. I could have hit the auto arrange button, but and then we hit slice now. And again, it saved all the stuff we did. So we should see uh, the few additional points I made. Um, again, it doesn't load those points uh, on first load just to make it quicker. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll wait for this to finish loading. And instead of, yep, there it is. And if we look on the back, yep, we have our little extra supports we added up here. They were a lot lower previously. So there you go. There is your uh, project file. And of course, now we can save this project file as a times three. And you kind of get the idea of where I'm going here. And you can also go back and edit the supports. You can go back in and let's say you wanted to really stack the plate and add another model on here. And you know this one's good. So there is a wonderful reason that we have project files. And this kind of sums it up for us. Uh, Resin users, that looks really cool. Uh, great job, Trahan, Trajan, Trid. I will link him in the description. So thank you again for putting up with this amazing video on uh, SL1 uh, project files. And uh, I hope this helps you, you know, make life easier when you're messing around with uh, your SL1 printer or any resin printer, because this will work on most any DLP printers. So thank you again, stay tuned for more, and as always, stay out of trouble.